Thanks to God, He grants us victory through the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I extend greetings of holy and sweet peace. From our Lord Jesus to all my brothers and sisters. May God bless your life. May God bless your family in a special way and shower you. With His abundant blessings. May He manifest Himself powerfully in your life. Today, we will pray Psalm 40. And this psalm will be a blessing to your life and your family. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe and activate the notifications to always receive the prayers we are posting here on our YouTube channel. No matter how simple they may be, I am praying for all the requests, presenting all the prayer requests in my prayers, and take possession of your victory because God will grant you His blessing. Today, we will pray Psalm 40, verse by verse, and understand what this Bible text teaches us. Psalm 40, a Psalm of David, verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, He turned to me and heard my cry. Here, the psalmist is saying that God listened to his cry, and he had waited patiently for the Lord. Waiting can be very difficult at times. It's not always easy to wait when we're expecting something. It's a challenging mission, but nothing is impossible for God. I don't know how long you have been waiting for your victory. I don't know how long you have been waiting for your blessing, but I come here as a prophet of God in your life to tell you, to inform you that while you wait, God is working for you. While you wait, God is parting the seas in your life. While you wait, God is opening the closed doors. While you wait, God makes the supernatural happen in your life. For this reason, take courage and rejoice in the Lord, because your waiting on God is not in vain. In Psalm 40, the psalmist says, I waited patiently. He didn't say he waited in anguish or worry, but he waited patiently calmly. The question is, how are you waiting? Are you waiting with anxiety or with patience? Wait with patience because God doesn't arrive late. God doesn't arrive early. God arrives at the right time, in the perfect moment to grant you victory, to grant you blessings, to grant you deliverance. God is not delaying. God is perfecting your victory. Say Amen, say thanks to God. And verse 2 says, He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire, He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Here, the psalmist once again declares that God lifted him out of the mire. Perhaps the psalmist was going through a period of sin and transgression. But in verse 2 of Psalm 40, he says that God lifted his feet out of the mire. This mire represents sin, and God is an expert at pulling people out of sin. He cleanses them with his blood and places them on a rock. This rock that the psalmist is talking about represents Jesus Christ, the eternal rock, and your feet are firmly planted on this eternal rock. It means that no one on this planet can remove you from this rock. Your steps are on the rock, and this rock is God. This rock is Jesus Christ. And when our steps are on the rock, no wind, no struggle, no storm can snatch us from the arms of Jesus. My friend, are you not hearing this psalm by chance? God is saying, Wait on the Lord, for I will also set your feet on a rock, and nothing and no one will take you away from my presence, says the Almighty Lord. Psalm 40 is a divine revelation that shows us that God works in the lives of those who wait patiently. It is a divine proof that God lifts men and women from the mire of sin, placing their feet on a rock, establishing their steps. And verse 3, Psalm 40 tells us even more, He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. In this verse 4, 
the psalmist is saying. That God has put a song, a hymn of praise, on their lips. It means that you will sing the song of victory. Perhaps you have already cried, felt sorrow, or anguish. Have you thought that God has forgotten you? Maybe you have gone through moments of imagining that God has forgotten you. And maybe you are feeling forgotten by God right now. But I come here as a prophet of God in your life to tell you that the Lord will put a new song on your lips. You will sing the anthem of victory. You will praise the name of the Lord. You will witness the greatness of God in your life and in your story. Rejoice your soul, trust. Wholeheartedly in the Lord, rest and wait, because the best from God is about to come into your life, your finances, your emotions. God will change your story, and you will sing a song of victory. And verse 3 clearly tells us, He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to the Lord, a hymn to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. The text here in verse 3 of Psalm 40 is saying, That God will put a song of praise on your lips. And all those who hear this song, all those who witness your victory, will be in awe. They will trust in the Lord. They will look and say, God is in the life of that woman, God is in the life of that man, that young man, that young woman. God will do this in your life. Claim your victory. Believe with all your heart because the best from God is yet to come. Verse 4 Tells us even more, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. In this verse 4, God is saying that blessed are the people who put their trust in the Lord. Hey, don't put your trust in earthly men. Don't rely on your own strength, but put your trust in God. When our trust is in God, we can overcome the giants. When our trust is in God, we can bring down by His power the walls that rise against us. It doesn't matter the size of the giant that has risen against your life or the strength it may possess. It doesn't matter the height of the wall before you, trying to hinder your victory. God's answer to your life today is, Put your trust in me, says the Lord, and I will reveal to you my power, my glory. And you will sing the hymn of praise, the anthem of victory. For I am your God, your healer, your judge, your shepherd. I am the one who lifts you up, defends you, and guards you. I am the Lord of your life, your story. Trust in me, says the Lord. God, your Father, the one who guards you. Verse 5 goes even further, Many, O Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you planned for us no one can recount to you, were I to speak and tell of them, they would be too many to declare. In this verse, 5. The psalmist is saying, How great are the wonders that God has done. Did you know that every day God performs a miracle in our lives? Every day a miracle happens in our lives. Are you breathing? That is a miracle happening. Are you listening to me? That is a miracle happening. Miracles occur in our lives. Have you ever stopped to imagine how many deliverances the Lord has granted you when you go to work? How many deliverances did God give you when you were returning from work? How many deliverances did the Lord grant you when you went on that trip? God is constantly performing miracles, but we fail to see, we fail to perceive the deliverances, the miracles that God is working in secret and in silence. God operates miracles in your life, so be encouraged and rejoice. You have a God who sees you, loves you. A God who sustains you. A God who is faithful and true to fulfill every word He has spoken to you. And verse 5 speaks about this, how many, O Lord my God, are the wonders You have performed for us. Verse 6 goes further, 
sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. No complaints. Here in verse 6, the psalmist is emphasizing, affirming that listening to God is much better than sacrificing. There are people who think that sacrifice is more important than obedience. And verse 6 tells us, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. The psalmist is saying, The Lord did not desire my sacrifice, my offering, but the Lord opened my ears. God opens our ears so that we can learn His word. Not that we don't need to sacrifice and offer, but above all, we need to obey God. Obedience to God is the greatest sign that we are worshippers of the Lord. Obedience to God is the first step to living a life of spiritual blessings and material blessings. Obey the Lord, and He will perform extraordinary miracles in your life, in your story, not just because you deserve it, but because of God's mercy upon your life, because of the grace of the Lord upon your life. The Word of God goes further in verse 7 of Psalm 40, saying, Then I said, Here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. In this verse 7, the psalmist is saying that your life, your story, is written in God's book. Meaning God writes our story. We simply need to accept what God has written for us. God has written a story of salvation for your life. You need to accept this salvation in your life. God has written for you a story of prosperity, a story of happiness, a story of honor, and a story of conquest. You only need to open your mouth and say, I take hold of the story that God has written for me. I want to live what the Lord has written for my life. The moment you wholeheartedly believe that the Lord has a story of victory and success in your life, and the moment you embrace that story and desire to live that story, that story becomes a reality in your life, and you experience the best of God. That is why many people cannot experience the best of God because they believe they are failures and defeated. But stop thinking that way. Stop thinking that you are a failure, that you are unhappy. Instead, think in the following way, believe with all your heart that you can do all things through Him who strengthens you. Believe that you are chosen by God and that the story He has written for your life is greater than any battles you may face. God has the best for you. Believe and take hold of it. Verse 8 of Psalm 40 further tells us, I desire to do your will, my God, your law is within my heart. Notice that the psalmist, in verse 8, declares to God, saying, I desire. Which means, I take pleasure, I have the will to do your will. The greatest thing on this planet and in this life is to do the will of God. Nothing is better, and nothing compares to fulfilling the Father's will. When we do God's will, spiritual wonders happen in our lives. Always. Seek to do God's will so that you may experience the best of God here on earth. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah and also in Deuteronomy, chapter 28, that those who do the will of the Father, who listen to the voice of the Lord and obey His commandments, will eat the best of the land. There will be prosperity in their homes. For this reason, always obey God's commands. Always obey the voice of the Lord. Find satisfaction, take delight in doing the will of the Father. In verse 9 of Psalm 40, it says, I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly, I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. In this verse, the psalmist declares that he proclaimed the word of God in the congregation. This shows us that we must preach the word of righteousness. You may say, but I don't have time to preach. Then be a missionary. Share this video with a friend. By doing so, you are contributing to the kingdom of the Father.
Preaching the word also means cooperating with those who have the gift of preaching, helping to spread the word of God. You may say, I don't know how to preach, but you can share this video with a friend, and they will listen to the word and be edified. But, whenever you can, proclaim the word of salvation. Verse 10 of Psalm 40 says, I do not hide your righteousness in my heart, I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. Here, the psalmist reinforces once again that he did not hide the righteousness of God in his heart. Instead, he proclaimed what was in his heart, the fervent word of God. When the word of God is fervently in your heart, do not grow weary of preaching, do not tire of proclaiming it. Verse 11 tells us even more, Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord, may your love and faithfulness always protect me. Here in verse 11, the psalmist is declaring to the Lord, Do not hold back, Lord, do not prevent your mercy. Who are we without the mercy of God? Without God's mercy, we are like a dry leaf tossed by the wind. Without God's mercy, we can do nothing and accomplish nothing. But when we have God's mercy upon our lives, that is when we are strengthened in the Lord and experience the benevolence, grace, and goodness of the Father. Verse 12 says, For troubles without number surround me, my sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Here, the psalmist David declares in verse 12 that troubles have surrounded him, and perhaps you find yourself in a similar situation to David. When you look ahead, behind, and to the sides, all you see are troubles trying to destroy you, trying to cloud your vision of God. But God is saying, I am the one who guards you. I am the one who defends you. Do not fear the troubles that are before you and around you. In verse 12, the psalmist clearly states, for troubles without number surround me. The Bible says in the letter written by Peter that Satan prowls around like a roaring lion, but around us are God's protecting angels, and no harm will come upon you, and no disaster will enter your home, as Psalm 91 declares. But the psalmist, in verse 12, says, They are more numerous than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Here, the psalmist is truly in a very complicated situation. The troubles surrounding him were numerous. He even affirms that they were more numerous than the hairs of his head. So, the situation was chaotic and challenging for David. But David's trust was in God. That's why in verse 13, he says, Be pleased, Lord, to save me, Lord, come quickly to help me. Here, the psalmist is asking the Lord to deliver him, to hurry and aid him. It is very similar to what we see in Psalm 70, Hasten, O God. In verse 3, he is saying, Be pleased, Lord, to save me and come quickly to help me. God is hastening to deliver you, my sister and brother. God is hastening to aid you, so rest assured. And in verse 14, the psalmist says, May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame, may those who plot my ruin turn back in dismay. There are people who wish you harm. There are people who desire your defeat. They will not witness your downfall. They will not see you fail because the one who is with you is greater than the sea. The one who is with you is greater than the storms, greater than the struggles. The one who is with you is the Almighty. And those who dug a pit for you to fall into, they themselves will fall into that pit. First, because God will grant you deliverance. And in verse 14, the psalmist tells you, May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame, may those who plot my ruin turn back in dismay. Those who wish you harm will be confounded by God because the Lord is with you to deliver you. Believe with all your heart that God is 
your faithful advocate. In verse 15, the psalmist further says, Let them be appalled because of their shame who say to me, Aha, aha. These are the ones who mock me, those who laugh at me. They will be confounded by the Lord. This is not vengeance. This is called the justice of God. It is always good to remember that vengeance and justice belong to the Father. Vengeance is when we act by our own strength. The justice of God is when you let God judge for you, and those who wish you harm will be confounded, and the Lord will repay the insult they have made against you. In verse 16, the psalmist further says, But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, may those who love your salvation say. Continually, Great is the Lord. Here, in verse 16, the psalmist declares that those who seek the face of God, those who love the salvation of the Father, may they say, Great is the Lord. You can repeat that word, Great is God. He gives me victory. Great is God. He honors me. Great is God. He saves me, defends me, protects me. And in verse 17, which is the last verse, the psalmist makes his final declaration in Psalm 40. He says, As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer, do not delay, O my God. This verse is very beautiful. The psalmist seems to pour out his heart before the Father, and he confesses his situation before God. In verse 17 of Psalm 40, he says, As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer, do not delay. O oh my God! This verse 17, the psalmist concludes Psalm 40 on a high note. Perhaps you feel like the psalmist David, feeling like a poor and needy person. Poverty here doesn't mean financial poverty but rather a poverty of the soul. He is in need of God. But he affirms by saying, The Lord takes thought for me. Hey, my sister and my brother, God takes care of you. God takes care of you in the smallest details. God takes care of you in all things. Pay attention to what God is speaking to you. Psalm 40 is very powerful, and it shows in verse 17 that God takes care of those who are in need. And if you are in need of God, if you are in need of Him, know that God takes care of you. He carries you in His arms and He says to you, Daughter, do not fear for I am with you, Son, do not fear for I am with you. Take courage in me. Rejoice in me. Rest and wait and trust. Why will you sing the song of victory? Those who mocked you will see the glory of God in your life. The Lord will honor your steps. The Lord will honor your life and your story. And you will share a great testimony of victory in your life. And those who hear this testimony will say, Only the Lord is God. Only the Lord is God. I want to invite you at this moment to join your faith with mine as we pray together. I want to pray for your life. Leave your prayer requests in the comments, no matter how simple they may be. Share what you need from God at this moment. What do you urgently need God to do in your life, this month, or this year? What do you need God to do? Let's pray. The Prayer of Psalm 40 The prayer of those who wait and trust in the Lord, for those who wait and trust will be rewarded by God. Close your eyes in this moment. And pray with me, the Holy Spirit of Truth. Here in your presence, we are and we want to ask for forgiveness for all our faults and weaknesses, forgiveness for all our sins. Here I am, your servant, Lord, and here is your servant who listens to me at this moment. Your Word confirms to us in Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me. God, 
come and incline yourself to the life of this woman and this man, granting your victory, your peace, your grace, your anointing, and your liberation. God, we read here Psalm 40. Verse by verse, and we understand, Lord, that you are a God of mercy. We understand in this Psalm 40 that you are a God who works on behalf of those who wait for him. And you are a living God who performs signs and wonders in the lives of those who fear you, in the lives of those who honor you, in the lives of those who believe in your word. Lord Jesus, I want to present every life that listens to me at this moment. We want to unite our faith, believing that you are the God of the impossible, the one who can make the supernatural happen, no matter how difficult the prayer request that your servant has placed in the comments. Lord of this video, in the name of Jesus, come and perform the supernatural, come and open the doors that are closed, come and grant your blessing, your victory. Enter with providence. Lord, into the causes, into justice. Enter with providence. Lord, come and untie everything that is tied up. Come and unlock everything that is locked. May your providence reach, Lord, your servant and the servant who prays alongside me. God, come and perform the supernatural. If it is sickness, heal it in this moment. If it is open doors, Lord, come and open the doors. God, make the supernatural happen. Pour out a rain of grace, a rain of victory, a rain of blessing, a rain of prosperity in the life of my sister, in the life of my brother who listens to me. In this hour, God, come and attend to the tears of this woman, the tears of this man who humbly asks for your victory in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive your victory, receive your blessing in this hour. Receive your prayer answer in the name of Jesus. Say Amen and thank God. Repeat this phrase with me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Repeat this phrase with me, I will overcome because I am confident in God. I take hold of the blessings of Psalm 40 in my life. Repeat once again, I take hold of the blessings of Psalm 40 in my life. I am a victorious person in Christ Jesus. Repeat this phrase with all your faith and hope. I am a victorious person in Christ Jesus. I take hold of my blessing, and I take hold of my victory. In the name of Jesus. This is the prayer of Psalm 40, and may the blessings of Psalm 40 be upon your life, your home, and your family. I greet all my brothers and sisters with the holy and sweet peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May God bless your life in a very special way, and may the blessings and victories of God be upon you and your family in the name of Jesus. Today, we will be praying Psalm 3, and this prayer will be a blessing to your life. Please stay until the end of this video because it will be a blessing for you and your entire family. Amen. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe now. Amen. I want to express my gratitude to all the friends who are part of this channel. To all of you who have made prayer requests, I am praying for all of you. Feel free to make your prayer request, no matter how simple it may be. If you need a blessing or a victory, comment below, and I will read and present all the prayer requests before God. May God greatly bless you and grant you great victories. God will speak to you in a very special way through Psalm 3. Pay attention because there is an answer from God for your life through this psalm. In verse 1 of Psalm 3, it says, Lord, how my foes increase. There are many who attack me. Perhaps you are going through a situation similar to the psalmist, facing persecutions and people rising against you. In this verse, 
David is talking about such experiences, saying, Lord, how my foes increase. There are many who attack me. There are moments in our lives when it seems like our adversaries are multiplying, people who rise against us, persecuting us, spreading gossip, speaking ill of us, and even harboring envy and ill intentions towards you. Life is a struggle, facing adversity with people persecuting you, even family members coming against you. But rest assured, my sister, one thing is certain, this battle will pass, and you will sing the victory anthem. The Lord will honor your faith, He will honor your prayer. The Bible says that those who are humiliated will be exalted by God. The humiliation, the persecution, the negative words spoken against your life can be great, but the honor of God will come to you. Those who stoned you will have to applaud your victory. Those who wanted to see you fall will witness you standing strong. Those who saw you weeping will see you smiling, and the name of Jesus will be glorified. That's exactly what the psalmist is saying in Psalm 3, Lord, how my foes increase. There are many who attack me. In verse 2, he says, Many say of me, God will not deliver him. These are the mockers, the people who look at you and say, There is no salvation for him, her. Perhaps you have heard this phrase before, there is no hope for you, give up. But God is saying, do not give up. There is still a solution. There is still hope. Do not be discouraged because I will intervene in this situation. Put all your faith and trust in what God is saying to your heart through His Word. He will honor your faith. Persevere and remain steadfast on the rock, which is Jesus because the God of David is also your God, and He guarantees your victory. In verse 3, David, the psalmist, declares, But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head. What a beautiful declaration! He acknowledges that the Lord is his shield, the one who protects and defends him, the one who advocates for his cause. My sister and brother, you have a faithful advocate who never loses a battle. From Genesis to Revelation, God has never lost a fight. He will not lose this battle, this struggle. The God who is with you makes you victorious. Lift up your head. They may be mocking you, but the answer comes from God. They may be envious of you, but it is God who provides the answer. You don't need to respond to those who defame you or persecute you. Let God answer for you. It is God who responds on your behalf, who speaks for you, and who acts on your behalf. The answer comes from God. That's why you should lift up your head, be of good courage, and maintain your faith, because God is your strong shield. He is the one who defends you with power, and He is present in your life. In verse 3, the psalmist says, But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. The one who lifts up my head means the one who honors my faith. The Bible says that those who are humiliated will be exalted. Perhaps you have experienced great humiliation, but the honor and exaltation of the Lord in your life will be even greater. Today may be a day of struggle, but tomorrow will be a day of victory. Embrace this word in the name of Jesus. In verse 4, the psalmist further says, I cried out to the Lord with my voice, and he answered me from his holy mountain. Here, David is saying that he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord heard him. There are moments in a believer's life when they think that God did not hear their prayers. Have you ever been through such a moment? Have you experienced a time when you faced such a great struggle that you wondered, 
Lord, are you listening to me? Are you truly hearing my prayer? Maybe you have gone through or are currently going through such a moment, feeling or thinking that God is not listening to you. But the psalmist, in Psalm 3, verse 4, says, I cried out to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy mountain. It may seem like everything is upside down, like everything is contradictory, the sea, the wind. But rest assured that in the midst of this storm, God is with you. In this desert, God is with you. In this battle, in this trial, God is with you, and victory is approaching. Get ready because you will share your testimony because the God of David is our God, and just as God exalted David, He will exalt our lives. Let us remain steadfast in faith because God hears our prayers. He does not reject prayer. If you have prayed, God has heard your prayer, and He will provide. He will bring healing, renewal, and victory into your life, your home, and your family. Claim this word in the name of Jesus. God is indeed listening to your prayer, yes, God is hearing your request, and in His perfect timing, in His appointed hour, He will make the supernatural happen. Through the eyes of faith, I can already see God moving heaven on your behalf. Embrace the victory. And in verse 5, the psalmist further says, I lay down and slept, I woke again because the Lord sustained me. Let's repeat this verse loudly. Let's repeat it together. It says, I lay down and slept, I woke again because the Lord sustained me. Once again, I lay down and slept, I woke again because the Lord sustained me. Do you know what this means? It means that you need to sleep peacefully. Those debts, those problems, that difficult situation that is stealing your sleep, Sleep peacefully because you will resolve this situation in the name of Jesus. Yes, this problem will be solved. Have faith, do not lose hope. You will overcome this adversity, and then you will come back to this channel to share your victorious testimony. Get ready because your blessing will be great. Do not let the worries of this world consume you. Trust in God's providence and His perfect timing. He is with you every step of the way. Let go of the worries that steal your sleep. Rest peacefully, just like the psalmist in Psalm 3. I lay down and slept, I woke again because the Lord sustained me. God is the one who sustains you, who holds your hand and says, My child, I am your God, your shepherd, your healer, your Lord, and I will never leave you alone. I will not forsake you, says the Lord. Put your head on the pillow and sleep with a clear conscience because God is taking care of everything. I know it's not always easy when we face difficult situations. We lie down and keep thinking, hours passing by, robbing us of sleep but we must trust in the Lord. We cannot allow these adversities to steal our sleep. Sleep peacefully because tomorrow is a new day, and the Lord is already working in your favor. When God works for us, our eyes may not see it, but He is working in secret. He is working in the unseen, and He will honor you publicly. All eyes will see God's honor in your life. Believe with all your heart. And in verse 6, the psalmist boldly declares, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Look at the courage of David. When God is with us, we become courageous, don't we? When we are certain that God is with us, we have no fear because the one who is with us is greater. Do not be afraid of curses, of spells, of enchantments, or of any of those things. 
Do not fear. Some people are afraid of the devil, afraid of darkness, afraid of the enemy, afraid of the evil works done against them. But do not be afraid because the one who is with you is greater than evil. The one who is with you is greater than darkness. The one who is with you is greater than demons. The one who is with you is the creator of heaven and earth. Do not be afraid because God is with you. Sleep peacefully. Rest in peace. Do as the psalmist did in Psalm 3, when thousands of people rose against him. You are protected by a strong shield that does not break, and the name of that shield is Jehovah Jesus. He is before you, and no harm will come to your dwelling, nor any plague to your house. You are under divine protection. Therefore, rest, trust, and calm your heart. Do not be afraid. That's what the psalmist is saying in verse 6. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. And in verse 7, he says even more, Arise, O Lord. Save me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek, you break the teeth of the wicked. Here, David is asking God to rise, to act in his favor. He is not giving a command because we are servants who receive orders from God. But David is humbly asking. He is saying, God, arise, O Lord. Arise, O Lord, and save me. You can say this with me, Arise, O Lord, and save me. God is rising from his throne to give you victory. He is rising to give you help. He is rising to give you healing. He is rising to open closed doors. He is rising to bring salvation to your home, to your family. He is rising to give you victory. In verse 8, the psalmist concludes Psalm 3 by saying, Salvation belongs to the Lord, your blessing be on your people. The blessing of the Lord is upon his people. The blessing of the Lord is upon me. The blessing of the Lord is upon you. The blessing of the Lord is upon us. Salvation comes from the Lord. The blessing of the Lord is upon us, and this blessing brings peace, hope, and confidence. With that, we can rest and calm our hearts because God takes care of us. So, calm your heart. If you're feeling any anguish in your heart, place your hand on your chest, and I will pray for you so that all anguish disappears. If you have any illness, place your hand on the affected area, and I will pray for you so that the illness disappears. Let us pray the prayer of Psalm 3, asking the Lord for His provision, protection, and victory. Let us pray in this moment. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Marvelous God, sublime and eternal Lord, in your holy and omnipotent presence, we are here to thank you for all that you have done and for all that you will do. We also humbly ask you, God, to remove all anguish and sadness from our hearts, to disappear in the name of Jesus. May every illness vanish from this body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask for your provision, your protection, your blessing, and your victory. Send forth your mighty angels into this house, bringing deliverance, cutting the ties, and undoing every entanglement. Lord, remove the obstacles from our path, 
open the closed doors. God, I ask for your financial blessing, your financial provision. The spiritual blessing, your spiritual blessing, be upon every area of the lives of your servant and those who listen to me. Bring your blessing, bring your love, bring your shower of victory upon our lives, Lord. We present our families before you, Lord. We present our health, we present everything we are and everything we have. Multiply the blessings, multiply the victories, multiply the achievements, multiply the finances of your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus, so that we may say as the psalmist said. I lay down and slept, I woke again, for the Lord sustained me, Psalm 3 verse 5. Guard us in the fortress of your power, Father. Deliver us from all evil, God, in the name of Jesus. I present marriages before you, God. I present finances. I present the sentimental lives of your people. Bring restoration to families, bring financial restoration, God. We place all our hope, all our faith in you. We put everything into your hands. Bring a special victory, especially in these days, Lord. Open the doors of provision and financial, spiritual, and material blessings in our lives. Father, grant us all the blessings and promises that are recorded in the Bible. Grant us the blessing of prosperity, the blessing in our families, in the name of Jesus. To this troubled and anguished heart, I ask you, Lord, to remove all anguish, all affliction, in the name of Jesus. Come with provision, God, and grant a special victory in the lives of your servant and those who listen to me at this moment. May all the giants fall, may all the walls crumble, may all evil fall, may all malignant forces fall to the ground, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask and thank you in advance because yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. God, in the name of Jesus, pour upon our hearts peace, tranquility of spirit, gratitude, strength, and faith. Multiply and increase our faith, strength, and anointing to march in your presence with power and authority. By your Spirit, make us invisible to our material and spiritual enemies, placing us in the realm of invisibility. We ask for your benevolence, your mercy, and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. My sister and my brother, take possession of your victory. Take possession of the blessings of Psalm 3 in your life, in your home, in your family, in your story, and remember that you were born to overcome and live every promise of God. Praise be to God, who grants us victory through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I extend my heartfelt greetings to all my brothers and sisters, with the holy and mighty peace of our Lord. May God bless your life, and may He bless your family in a special way. We will be praying the 23rd Psalm, the Shepherd's Psalm, one of the most well-known psalms in the Bible. This psalm will be a blessing for your life and your family. May God bless you as you listen to every word of this powerful psalm until the end, for each word of this psalm carries a blessing for you and your entire family. We will study verse by verse and pray through this powerful psalm. I have a special request for you, share this psalm with a friend, a loved one, or a family member. It will undoubtedly be a blessing in their life. Also, subscribe to our channel and enable notifications to receive more prayers and psalms. Today, we will pray the 23rd Psalm, the Shepherd's Psalm. It is the most read and well-known psalm in the Bible, written by David. 
Verse 1 tells us, The Lord is my shepherd. This signifies a relationship. When the psalmist said that the Lord was his shepherd, he was expressing that God is the one who takes care of him, defends him, protects him, and keeps him safe. That's why he is my shepherd. When we observe the relationship between a shepherd and a sheep, we realize that the shepherd is willing to give his life for the sheep. And we are the sheep of God. The Lord is our shepherd, and this is the relationship God has with us. This is the intimacy we have with the Father. Remember that you are a sheep, and God is your shepherd. He takes care of you, protects you, defends you, and keeps you safe. The 23rd Psalm continues, I shall not want. This means that He will not fail me. In moments of struggle, He will be with me. I shall not want means that He provides for me. He grants me my needs, whatever I require, He will supply. He is your shepherd, and you will lack nothing absolutely nothing. He will supply your needs, so you shall not lack anything. He makes me lie down in green pastures, the phrase, he makes me lie down, means that he makes you rest, he gives you rest for your heart. In green pastures, means that this faithful shepherd carries us in his arms and places us in lush pastures. He makes us lie down, he makes us rest in a green and prosperous place. Green pastures symbolize prosperity. He makes you lie down in prosperity, He makes you happy in the arms of this faithful shepherd. He leads me beside quiet waters, this is the care of this shepherd. He gently guides me to calm waters. It is the Lord who guides you, directing your steps to make the right decisions in life. Don't worry because the one who takes care of you is the faithful shepherd, the good shepherd who leads you to calm waters. Quiet waters are a place of refreshment, a place of tranquility. This shows God's special care for us. The Apostle Peter said, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The one who cares for you created the heavens and the earth, the sea, and the stars, and He takes care of you in every detail. And He restores my soul, the 23rd Psalm revives my soul. This represents inner healing. Our soul is where all our feelings reside, all the emotions of our life are within our soul. If you feel sadness, it comes from the soul. If you feel anguish, it comes from the soul. If you feel joy, it comes from the soul. In other words, all the positive and negative emotions come from our soul, and the 23rd Psalm tells us that He restores our soul. To restore means to bring relief to your soul. If you, who are listening to me, have a troubled soul, a sad soul, a weary soul, the Good Shepherd is coming to meet you at this moment, refreshing your soul, bringing peace to your spirit, bringing peace to your life. Believe that He will restore your soul. The 23rd Psalm also says, He guides me along the right paths, this represents God's complete guidance. For those of you who are feeling lost, unsure of which path to take in life, whether to travel or stay, questioning if a relationship is from God or not, or contemplating whether you should remain in your current church, perhaps you have doubts in your heart and feel without God's guidance, let me minister to your heart and tell you this. He will guide you along the paths of righteousness. This is a promise from Psalm 23, He guides me along the right paths. In other words, the Lord will lead your steps towards what is just and right, so that you can make the right decisions. So, let the Good Shepherd guide you, the Shepherd of Psalm 23. The text continues, For His name's sake, He leads me in the paths of righteousness. 
for his name's sake, means the purpose of our lives is to glorify the name of the Lord. For his name's sake, means, I will do things in your life for the sake of my name. I will bless your financial life, your relationships, your family, and your health for the sake of my name, says the Lord. It is for the sake of this precious and powerful name that he will guide you. That's what the psalmist is saying. For the love of this beautiful and wonderful name, for the love of God's name, he will guide you along the paths of righteousness. The 23rd Psalm further states, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What does this valley of the shadow of death that David refers to represent? It represents trials, struggles, and adversity. That fight where you thought, I will die in this test, I will perish in this trial. Have you ever faced a similar situation where you thought you would perish in the midst of a struggle? Let me know in the comments if you have experienced the valley of the shadow of death, that trial, that adversity where you thought you would perish. But the psalmist is saying, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, I will fear no evil represents faith. When we are going through the valley of the shadow of death, through the valleys of testing, anguish, struggles, and disappointments, we need to hold on to our faith. We need to believe with all our hearts that we will not perish or die because the one who is our shepherd is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the path that directs your steps, that illuminates your spirit. He is the life that rescues you from death. If you are going through a trial, make your prayer request because we will pray for you. This was the confidence of the psalmist, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. For you are with me represents God's faithfulness to us. When the psalmist David said in Psalm 23, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, it signifies God's faithfulness to us. Even when going through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with you. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus said, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. From Monday to Sunday, God is with you to deliver you, protect you, guard you, restore you, and bless you. This confidence of the psalmist made him believe that even if he walked through the valleys of shadows and death, he would not fear. The one who is with you is greater than the valleys, greater than the struggles because the Lord is your shepherd. The expression, for you are with me, also refers to the shepherd's staff and rod. With the staff, the shepherd corrects, and with the rod, the shepherd pulls the sheep. In other words, whenever we, the sheep of Christ, are walking in the wrong path, he will use the rod to correct us and bring us back to the path of victory, the path of peace. That's why the psalmist it says that your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In other words, they comfort me because they correct me, they correct me because they love me. Those of you who are mothers know very well, those of you who are fathers know very well, when you correct your child, you correct them because you love them. And the psalmist is saying, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The staff was used for correction and protection, so as a sheep, in the position of a sheep, he is declaring to God that this protection of life, this protection of God, brings comfort to his soul. In Psalm 23, it says, In the presence of my enemies, which represents the honor and exaltation of God in your life. When the psalmist says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, it's God telling you that he will honor you, not just in the presence of your friends, but in the presence of your enemies. This is not vengeance. 
This is divine justice because there is a difference between vengeance and justice. Vengeance is when you take matters into your own hands, but justice is when the hand of God acts in your favor. Your enemies, those who mock you, despise you, humiliate you, those who look at you with disdain, those who look down on you or up at you, those who scorn you. These are the people who will sit at the table and witness the honor of God in your life so that the name of God may be glorified. That's why the psalmist says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God will honor you, exalt you, and prosper you, and those who mocked will have to applaud. Those who slandered will have to glorify and spread the good news that God honored your life and gave you victory. And the psalm goes even further, stating that anointing my head with oil represents consecration. One day, your mind, where thoughts reside, will be filled with thoughts of faith, thoughts of conviction. You will understand perfectly and clearly that God is guiding your life and that He is your faithful shepherd guiding your steps. Anointing my head with oil represents the Lord consecrating your life, declaring that you are anointed by God. You are anointed, my Lord. And the psalm continues, my cup overflows, which represents God's prosperity in your life. God is saying, I will not only fill your cup, but I will cause it to overflow. Imagine when you pour water into a cup, it fills up, but if you leave the tap running, it will overflow. There will be water inside and water on the outside. And when you hold a cup that's overflowing, you can feel what's on the inside and what's on the outside. Here, God is saying that He will overflow your cup. In other words, you will receive abundance both internally and externally you will have prosperity in your life. God doesn't want to merely fill your cup, He wants it to overflow. He wants to bless you abundantly, not just for your own benefit, but also to bless others. Just like a cup overflowing with water, you will experience an overflow of God's blessings, pouring into your life from within and spilling over to touch the lives of those around you. God's prosperity will be evident in every aspect of your life. He is saying, perceive that when you hold a cup overflowing, you can feel what's inside and what's outside. That's what I will do with your cup. You will receive overflowing blessings, both inwardly and outwardly. Your cup will not merely be filled, it will overflow. God wants to bless your life with abundance, not only for your own sake, but also to bless others. He wants to pour out His blessings upon you, filling your cup until it overflows. Open your heart and receive this promise. Declare with faith, Lord, You are my shepherd. Overflow in my life. Fill every area of my life with Your prosperity and blessings. God desires to overflow in your home, your relationships, your finances, your health, and every aspect of your life. Embrace this promise and experience the overflowing goodness of God. In your life, there will be abundance, not only in your home but also to help your fellow human beings. Your table will be filled with plenty, not just for yourself but also for your friends and those in need. Your wardrobe will be abundant, providing for both yourself and those who require assistance. God will overflow, abundantly pouring out blessings. It signifies that you will have so much more, not just for yourself but also for others. God doesn't want to merely fill your cup, He wants it to overflow. He desires to make you prosper in every aspect of your life, financially, spiritually, materially, and in all ways. God wants to overflow in your home, your life, and every area. 
and even in the darkest times, you shall not be overcome. Embrace this promise, claim it with faith. Declare, Lord, you are my shepherd. Overflow in my life. God doesn't want to just fill you, He wants to overflow in your home, in your life, in every area. And even in the face of adversity, His abundant blessings will not fade away. Embrace the overflowing goodness of God in your life. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This represents daily blessings. When the psalmist in Psalm 23 says, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He is declaring that God will be with you every day. It's a daily blessing. Goodness and mercy are present in your life every single day. On Monday, there's a blessing. On Tuesday, there's a blessing. On Wednesday, there's a blessing. On Thursday, there's a blessing. On Friday, there's a blessing from God. On Saturday, there's a blessing from God. On Sunday, every day of your life, mercy and goodness will be with you, guiding you, protecting you, and blessing you. This represents daily provision in your life. The Psalm 23 concludes by saying, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It represents the promise of eternity. The text tells you that you will be in God's house forever. You will find comfort in this good shepherd who watches over you, guides you, and ensures that you lack nothing. You can declare, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You will not lack in your home. You will not lack because God will overflow in your storehouses and overflow in your life. Take hold of this word, this promise, this blessing, this gift from God in your life. I want to offer a special prayer for you. These were the verses of Psalm 23, and I explained each verse. Share it with a friend who may not fully understand the meaning of Psalm 23. This video will help you and others better comprehend the significance of each verse. In this very moment, I want to pray the prayer of Psalm 23. If you can, close your eyes and focus on God because we are going to pray in this moment. Leave your prayer requests in the comments, and I will present each prayer request to God, asking the Father to grant you what you need, what you require, and what you desire. Let's pray, let's enter into this covenant of prayer in this moment. Let us pray, Holy Spirit of God, Almighty Lord who created the heavens and the earth, you are our shepherd, and we shall not want. Lead us beside still waters, guide us gently, and provide for us. You are the faithful shepherd, you are the Almighty Lord, and I want to lift up the life of every woman listening to me. I want to present the life of every man listening to me in this moment, God. Perhaps I may not know them personally, but your Spirit knows their hearts. Your Spirit knows their hearts, so come and bless them, come and prosper them, come and bless their lives, the lives of those who are listening to this Psalm 23. May your blessings reach them, granting them victory, preparing a table before them in the presence of their enemies. Anoint their heads with oil, so that their cup may overflow. Overflow, Lord, in their financial lives, in their spiritual lives, in their lives, O Lord. May there be prosperity in their lives because you are their shepherd, and they shall not lack. So, Jesus, we want to exercise our faith in prayer, believing wholeheartedly that you will do the impossible. God, I present the marriage of this woman. Come and bless them. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this marriage. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this company. 
May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this work. Open the doors of employment. Open the doors of financial abundance. Lord, bless this couple who desires to get married. May your blessing, the blessing of Psalm 23, come to meet them so that they may attain this gift, God. For this man and this woman who are unemployed, open the doors of employment because you are our shepherd, and we shall not lack anything. We take hold of every blessing. We take hold of every victory that is recorded in Psalm 23. We take hold, Lord, of all the blessings declared in Psalm 23. May this Psalm 23, Lord, be fulfilled in our lives so that we may experience the prosperity of the sheep in the arms of the Good Shepherd. God, you are our refuge and strength. You are the faithful shepherd. In the name of Jesus, I present each prayer request, and may the blessing of Psalm 23 rest upon each prayer request. May you, Lord, prosper, honor, exalt, and grant your victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask and we thank you in advance. Amen. Thank God for the victories of Psalm 23 in my life, in the name of Jesus. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. God bless you abundantly. A big hug. The peace of the Lord Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, and may God bless our lives in a very special way. Today, we will be offering a prayer for your life and your family. This prayer will be based on Psalm 91 which is the psalm of divine protection over our lives. May God bless us and may this week be a week of victory, accomplishments, miracles, and may the Lord grant you rich spiritual blessings. Feel free to leave your prayer requests, expressions of gratitude, or share your testimony in the comments of this video. And if you're new to this channel, I invite you to subscribe, turn on notifications, and become part of this prayer family. We are here every day, praying and seeking the face of God, and thanks to God. Many lives have been blessed, and many people have received blessings, miracles, and victories through our prayers. It is always a great joy to pray for you and ask God for His constant blessing upon our lives. Share this prayer from Psalm 91 with your friends and family. Surely, it will be a blessing in all our lives. And Psalm 90 is a well-known psalm. It says this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my God, my refuge, my fortress, and in Him I will trust. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look, and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him, I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. 
I will give you abundance of days and show you my salvation. These are the blessings of Psalm 91. Through this Psalm 91, we can perceive that God is the one who guards us. God is the one who protects us. God has kept your life. God has protected your story. You are in the palm of God's hand. And the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon your life, upon your family. And verse 7 says, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. In other words, you may be surrounded by enemies, but God is your shield. God protects you. God defends you. And in verse 11, the psalmist declares, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. In other words, God has sent a strong angel to protect you in this battle. In this battle, you are not alone. There are warrior angels, mighty angels fighting for your life. When you go to work, there are angels of God surrounding and protecting you. When you return from work, there are angels of God guarding your life. We may not perceive it with our eyes, but every day, God grants us deliverance. If we could see and perceive the spiritual world, we would witness angels warring against the forces of evil. God protects our lives 24-7. Sometimes, there are deliverances that we cannot perceive, but God is delivering us. So be assured, my sister and my brother, God has sent a strong angel to be with you in this battle, in the name of Jesus. Through the eyes of faith, I can see that there are angels of God surrounding your home, surrounding your life, and that which you have prayed for. The blessing you have prayed for, to protect someone. You, as a mother, praying and saying, Lord, protect my children. No, my sister, that nothing bad has happened in your child's life because of your prayer. When you pray for your children, God sends strong angels, warrior angels, to guard your children, to protect your relatives, your family. Every time we pray and ask God for protection, the Lord sends angels to undo the enemy's traps. In the name of Jesus, if the enemy has planned against your home, against your family, the enemy's plans are being undone now by the angel of God, the angel of the Lord. The angel of Psalm 91 is going to your home at this moment, cutting the ties, undoing the entanglements, and smoothing the path. If your ways are entangled, the angel of the Lord will untangle them because God has already given orders concerning you to grant you victory, conquest, and blessing. Claim the blessings of Psalm 91 in your life. Psalm 91 assures us that we are protected and guarded by God. We are in the shelter of the Most High and under the shadow of the Almighty. We can rest because God is our refuge, our fortress. He is present. Jesus said, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. On Monday, God is with you. On Tuesday, God is with you. On Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, on every day of your week, God guards your life. God protects your life and sends mighty angels to guard and defend you. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? In other words, the angels of the Lord are guarding our lives by the mercy of God. And in this moment, let us pray to the Lord. I will ask God for the blessings of Psalm 91 to be upon your life and the life of your family. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign Eternal God, Father, Creator of heaven and earth, in your holy and powerful presence. 
We are here and we want, Lord, in this moment of prayer, to present our lives before you, acknowledging that we are nothing without you. We need you, Lord. We are in need of your mercy, and it is because of your mercy that we are alive and standing. We want to ask for the blessings of Psalm 91. Lord, may these blessings of Psalm 91 be upon our lives, God, and upon our families, not just this week, this month, or this year, but in the coming years as well. Lord, may your blessing, the blessings of Psalm 91, be upon our homes every single day of our lives. For your word reveals that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So we ask you, Lord, to hide us in the secret place of the Most High and under your shadow. Lord, make us rest. God, your word also says in Psalm 91 that we shall declare, The Lord is our refuge, our fortress, and in him we trust. For it is you, O God, who delivers us from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Deliver us, Lord, from the snares of the enemy, from the traps of the fowler. Break the snares, Lord, undo the enemy's schemes, and guard our families. Guard our lives with your love, your grace, and your righteousness. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to cover us, Lord, with your feathers, for under your wings we find safety. Lord, be our shield, Almighty God, and may your truth protect us. Come to guard our souls, Lord God. You are faithful to save. You are faithful to heal. You are faithful to transform. You are faithful to strengthen our hearts in your presence. Strengthen, Lord, the weary. Increase the strength of those who have no vigor. Lift up those who are discouraged, I ask you, Lord. Grant them courage, grant them strength, and grant them boldness. For your word says that though a thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, we will not be harmed. So, Lord, guard us. Guard us from evil and danger. Guard us from distress. Guard us from suffering. Cut, Lord, the cords that the enemy tries to use to bind the souls of your people. God, in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone who is imprisoned by depression, trapped in sadness, held captive by past disappointments, come and break that spiritual prison. May all sadness, all anguish, and all depression vanish in the name of Jesus, and may relief, peace, strength, joy, and encouragement come in its place in your presence. Holy Spirit, your word says in Psalm 91, verse 10, No harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. God, you guard our homes, you guard our lives, you guard our coming and going. Your word confirms in verse 11, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Send forth, Lord, a mighty angel to undo the bonds, to unravel the entanglements. God, we acknowledge that the glory is yours and everything comes from you, and all that exists stems from your greatness, your glory, and your love. And we ask you, Lord, to send a warrior angel to wage war in the spiritual realm, that this angel may undo the enemy's bonds in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we believe in the power that resides in your name, for through your name demons fall, through your name Jesus, illnesses disappear. And through your name Jesus, miracles and the supernatural occur. And in your name, we ask you to guard us, to deliver us, in your name, I beseech you. If there is someone who is sick listening to me at this hour, may all sickness in their bones, in their flesh, in their body, in their soul, 
in their spirit, may all sickness, whatever the ailment, vanish now in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We want to claim all the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives. God grants us spiritual authority. Lord, grant us abundance of days and show us your salvation. May these blessings of Psalm 91 manifest in our lives, in our homes, and in our families. We ask you, O God, for you are omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the Almighty, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. You are the One who heals, who saves, who liberates, and who transforms. You are the One who makes the impossible happen, and we ask You in the name of Your Beloved Son, the One who died and rose again on the third day. The One who walked on water, the one who made the dead rise, the one who made the blind see, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask for the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives, for the glory of your name. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Ah! Amen and thanks be to God. May God bless your life, my dear sister, and my dear brother. Know that we are together in this prayer covenant. We are here every day praying, seeking the face of God. Claim your victory. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 91 in your life. Amen. Send this prayer to your friends, to your family. May God bless your life and your family in a special way. And remember, you were born to conquer and experience all the blessings of Psalm 91 in your life. Today we will be praying Psalm 46. This psalm is incredibly beautiful, just like the other psalms, and we will be praying verse by verse. We will analyze, examine what each verse reveals to us, and based on that, we will offer a prayer inspired by Psalm 46. God is our refuge. Before we begin, I want to invite you to subscribe to the Activate Notifications channel. If you are already subscribed, please share this prayer with a friend, so they can also participate in this blessed prayer. May God bless your family, may God bless you in a special way. Psalm 46 is a psalm that deeply speaks to my heart, and God will speak powerfully to your heart through this mighty psalm. Psalm 46, verse 1, says that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In this verse, we can perceive that God reveals Himself to us as a refuge, a source of strength, and a readily available help in times of trouble. Anguish is a difficult moment that we all experience. Who hasn't gone through a moment of anguish, a moment of affliction? But this psalm comforts our hearts by showing us a God who, besides being a refuge, is also our strength and a present help in moments of anguish. I don't know how you came across this video. Perhaps you, who are listening to me, are feeling sad, downcast. Has a problem arisen in your life? But I want you to know that God is your refuge. God is your strength, He is your refuge because He guards you, He guards you because He loves you. He is your strength because He sustains you with power, grace, love, and kindness. He is your help. In moments of anguish, affliction, He comes to rescue us. 
That's how the people of Israel were in the midst of the desert. Before them was a vast sea, but God was a very present help in times of trouble. The sea opened up, and the people crossed on dry land. Know that your God is present in moments of affliction, in moments of anguish, in moments of scorn, in the difficult moments of life. God is a refuge and strength for your life, for your soul. And verse 2 tells us, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Therefore we will not fear, even if the circumstances of life, even if life's moments are difficult, chaotic, even if the world is in crisis, I will be in Christ. Even if the world is in calamity, I will be in the refuge and strength, guarded and protected by God. When the psalmist in verse 2 says, Therefore we will not fear. He is saying, Because God is my refuge and strength, I will not be afraid. In other words, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid because your God is a mighty God who guards you, defends you, and is a shield in your life. So he says in verse 2, Therefore we will not fear. I will not be afraid, I will not be afraid, because God is my refuge and strength. Every time fear knocks on the door of your heart, tell fear, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Do not be afraid, do not be afraid of adversities, problems, conflicts, giants, or walls. Do not be afraid, because the God who called you is faithful, and He guarantees your victory. He guarantees blessings in your home, in your family. The God you serve is a refuge and strength, a present help in times of anguish. And for this reason, the psalmist tells you, therefore we will not fear, even if the earth gives way. Just see the confidence of the psalmist. He is saying that even if the earth moves, even if the earth gives way, he will not fear, even if the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea. In other words, even if an earthquake happens, I will not fear because my God is my refuge and strength. That's what the psalmist is saying in verse 2. And in verse 3, he goes even further, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains tremble with its tumult. In other words, even if everything around me is conflicting, even if everything around me seems difficult, complicated, problematic, even so, I will not fear. Even if the earth gives way, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains are cast into the midst of the sea, even so, I will continue to trust in God because I know that my Redeemer lives and will ultimately rise upon the earth. And the psalmist is teaching us that we need to trust in God. And how were Jesus' disciples in the midst of the storm? Jesus was sleeping in the boat. The storm was raging, and the disciples were fearful, they were afraid. Jesus wanted to teach his disciples that they didn't need to be afraid because the one in the boat was greater than the seas, greater than the winds, greater than everything. Jesus rises up and calms the sea and the wind. Jesus is rising up in your life today to calm the storm, to calm the contrary winds. For this reason and for this purpose, do not fear, do not be dismayed, and do not be afraid. Do as the psalmist did in Psalm 46, therefore we will not fear. Even if the earth gives way, and even if the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains tremble with its tumult. In verse 4 of chapter 46, the psalmist goes even further. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Notice that in this verse 4, the psalmist tells you that there is a river, 
and this river whose streams make glad the city of God. Which river is the psalmist referring to in Psalm 46? It is the river of living water. It is the same river that Jesus spoke of to the Samaritan woman. In the Gospel of John, it is the same river described in the book of Revelation. It is the river that brings life, also described in the book of Ezekiel about this river. This is the river that brings joy. The waters of this river are the Holy Spirit. Water represents purity. Water represents purification. And the river that purifies is the river that transforms. It is the river that heals diseases. It is the river that cures sin, that washes our spiritual garments, and the waters of this river. It is the Holy Spirit of God that brings joy to the city, the dwelling place of the Most High. This river is now entering your house. This river of God, the purifying river, the transforming river, the healing river, the river that opens doors, the river that brings joy, the river that comforts our hearts. The Holy Spirit of God is entering your house, entering your life, and purifying your soul. And it is about this river that verse 4 is referring to. The river that represents the Holy Spirit of God, and this river, the streams of these waters, brings joy to the city of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit brings joy to our hearts. And in verse 5, it says even more, God is in her midst. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Notice that in verse 5 of Psalm 46, it says, God is in her midst. The text does not say that God is on the right side, the left side, in front, or behind. No. The text says that God is in the midst. What does it mean that God is in the midst? When you place something in the middle of a room, everything around it seems to fade away. When you put something in the middle, highlighted in the center of a room, everyone who enters can perceive what is in the middle. Have you noticed? Everything in the center is observed, everything in the center stands out. When the text says in verse 5 that God is in her midst, the psalmist is saying that God is in the center. God is the center of attention. God is in the midst. It means He is the most important thing in my life. God is the most important. That's why He is in the center, in the midst. Notice that when Jesus went to die on the cross, He died in the midst of two thieves. Even in His death, the middle, the center, belonged to Him. God is in the midst, in the center of your life. God is in the midst of your house. God is in the midst of your marriage, your work. When God is in the center of our lives, the Word of God tells us that God is in her midst. In other words, when God is in the center of our lives, highlighted in our lives, we will not be shaken, and God will help us when morning breaks. So allow God to be in the center of your life, and nothing will shake your faith, Nothing will shake your hope in God, and the Lord will help you. When morning breaks, in other words, God will be ready to help you and come to your aid. And in verse 6, the psalmist declares, The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. When the psalmist says, The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts, we can see the power, the potency of God's voice. Notice that in this verse 6, the psalmist tells us that the Lord utters his voice and the earth melts. In other words, the voice of the Lord is so powerful that the earth melts. 
The voice of the Lord is so powerful that no stony heart can withstand the voice of God. The voice of the Lord is so powerful, and curses are broken, that all evil, everything that comes against your life, is undone. Why? Because the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is capable of melting the earth. Here the psalmist is trying to exalt. He wants to show us how powerful the voice of the Lord is. And this voice is saying to you today, Daughter, son, do not fear, for I am with you. I am your refuge and your strength. A present help in times of trouble. And in verse 7, the psalmist makes a very important declaration. He says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In this verse 7, the psalmist is saying, The Lord of hosts is with us. Hey! I'm telling you that the Lord of hosts is with you. Yes, I'm not saying that the president is with you, that the governor is with you. That the Air Force, Navy, Army is with you. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the God who made the heavens and the earth is with you. The God who made the sea and the stars is with you. The one who is with you is greater. The one who is with you is greater than the sun, greater than the moon. The one who is with you is greater than the stars. The one who is with you is greater than the seas. The one who is with you is greater than the giants. Who is with you is greater than the governors. Who is with you is greater than everything and greater than everyone. Who is with you is the one who made the heavens and the earth, the one who parted the Red Sea for the people of Israel to pass on dry land. The one who brought down the walls of Jericho, the one who made the giant fall to the ground, the one who healed the sick, the one who died and rose again on the third day. It is this one who is with you. Therefore, take courage, rejoice, and rest your heart, because the one who is with you is stronger than evil, stronger than darkness, and stronger than wicked deeds. The one who is with you is the Lord God Almighty. So do not be afraid. And Psalm 46, verse 7, tells us, The Lord of hosts is with us. Say it out loud, The Lord of hosts is with me. Is with us, and I will not fear. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In verse 8, Psalm 46 continues to say, Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has brought on the earth. Here the psalmist extends an invitation in verse 8, Come. Behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has brought on the earth. The psalmist is saying, Come and see, come and see how powerful God is. Come and see the works he has done. When the text speaks of the desolations he has brought on the earth, it means that God does great things. Notice that he did something tremendous in Egypt, bringing ten plagues upon them to liberate his people. See how God parted the sea for the people of Israel to pass through and closed it to prevent the Egyptians from following. So, what desolations has he brought on the earth? That is why the psalmist says, Come and behold, Come and see how faithful God is in your life. How faithful God is in your home, how faithful God is to you. And in verse 9, he says even more, he makes wars cease. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth, he breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two, he burns the chariots with fire. This verse 9 is very interesting because in verse 7, the psalmist says that the Lord is the Lord of hosts. However, in verse 9, he says that the Lord makes war cease. In other words,
God is a God who is the Lord of hosts, but what is God's battle? God's battle is to cease wars. What does that mean? Ceasing wars means God is saying, I will cease the wars in your family. I will cease the wars in your workplace. I will cease the conflicts, the fights. I will bring peace among your family members. I will bring peace in your city, in your neighborhood. In other words, God is the God who is the Lord of hosts, but he comes to cease, to stop the wars, the struggles, the trials, and the afflictions of life. Very powerful. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. It is for him to cease wars to the end of the earth. What will he do? He will break the bow, cut the spear in two, and burn the chariots with fire. And in verse 10, the psalmist is filled with God and he says, Be still, and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted in the earth. This verse 10 is very strong, very powerful. God is saying to me, to you, be still, calm down. Why so much anxiety, why so much hurry? Be still, be still in the Lord. Verse 10, Psalm 46 is saying, this calms your heart. Do not be anxious, do not rush. Rest in the Lord, be still in your soul. Be still, rest. Be still, God is saying in verse 10 of Psalm 46, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. Be still your soul, rest in the Lord, for He takes care of you. He watches over you. He works for you. He fights for you. He heals your soul, He transforms your life. He lifts you up with power. He is your refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. For this reason, be still. Know that God will be exalted on the earth and among the nations. And in verse 11, the psalmist concludes the psalm by saying, The Lord of hosts is with us. He reinforces what he said in verse 7, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Notice that in verse 7 and in verse 10, the psalmist makes the same declaration. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I was wondering with God, asking God why the psalmist repeated the same phrase twice in Psalm 46. In verse 7, he says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And in verse 11, in verse 11, I apologize, I said verse 10, in verse 11 the psalmist repeats the same phrase again. In verse 10, he says, Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted on the earth. And in verse 11, he repeats what he said in verse 7, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Why does he repeat it twice? God ministered to my heart. God spoke to me. Why does the psalmist repeat the same phrase twice? Do you know why? It's because many times we forget that the one who is with us is powerful. Have you noticed that in times of affliction, in moments of anguish? Sometimes we think that God is not listening to our prayer. That's how the disciples were in the boat when the storm was raging. They forgot that the Lord of hosts, the one who calms the sea and the wind, was there in the boat. The psalmist repeats the same phrase twice in verse 7 and again in verse 11 because he wants to strengthen, strengthen in our minds that the one who is with us is the Almighty God. And my sister and my brother, 
The one who is with you is not a weak God. The one who is with you is not a God who needs help. The one who is with you is not a God who walks with a crutch. The one who is with you is not a small God. The one who is with you is an almighty God. That's why the psalmist repeats in verse 7 and verse 11 that the one who is with us is the Lord of hosts. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And God, repeating, God only repeats what we need to hear when we need to hear it multiple times. That's why in Psalm 46, he repeats it twice in verse 7 and verse 11. He, the Lord of hosts, is with us. He is with us to give us victory. He is with us to heal, transform, lift up, strengthen, completely transform our lives. So do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord of hosts is in your life. Amen. Claim this word. Claim what God has promised for you. I want to invite you at this moment to pray with me. Let's pray to the Lord, asking for His divine providence, seeking healing, salvation, and the blessings of Psalm 46 in our lives. Close your eyes and pray with me. Holy Spirit of God, we have meditated on each verse of Psalm 46. And we believe, O God, that you are the God of the impossible. You are the God who accomplishes the impossible in our lives. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. We will not fear even if the mountains crumble and everything around us shakes, for we are confident in you. We are rooted in the rock who is Christ Jesus. In this moment of prayer, I want to present the life of your servant who is listening to me, the life of your handmaid who is listening to me. Come and bless, come and strengthen, come and lift up, come with your grace, come and give encouragement to her and to him in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I ask you, God, to send your angel and may your angel undo every entanglement, remove every obstacle that is blocking the victory of your daughter and your son. Guard your people, Lord, for you are the Lord of hosts. We believe in your power. You are the Lord of hosts, and you are with us to protect, guard, defend, and guide us. Therefore, Lord, fight for us. Come and cease the wars to the ends of the earth. Put an end to the conflicts in households, the strife between couples, the conflicts at work, the conflicts in the church, and the conflicts in families. Let them all cease now, let them be annihilated. Let all evil, every negative force, every attack, and every counterattack from the enemy be undone by the power of Jesus' blood. Lord, cover our families, our homes with your blood. Defend us, protect us, guard us with your power and mercy. God, in the life of this woman listening to me and this man listening to me, pour out your blessings, your gifts, your virtue, and your victory. Shower us with blessings, grace, and victory over the lives of my sister and my brother, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask for the blessings of Psalm 46 in our lives, in our families, in our finances, and in our emotions. Lord God, bring healing, bring liberation, bring transformation, open doors, and grant victory. For you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In the name of Jesus, we take possession, Lord, of all the blessings, promises, and gifts that you have for our lives. In the name of Jesus, Amen and thanks be to God. Repeat this phrase with me, I take possession of all the blessings of Psalm 46 in my life. Repeat it again. God is my refuge and strength, 
a present help in difficult times. Say it louder, say it for hell to hear, for heaven to hear, for people to hear. Declare for everyone to hear, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In God, I can do all things because He strengthens me. Amen. Take hold of victory. Believe that you were born to overcome, and nothing and no one can steal from you the blessings of God that are in your life. Amen. May God bless you. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe and enable notifications. May God bless you. May the peace of the Lord and the prosperity of Christ be in your life. May the blessings of Psalm 46 be upon you.